One of the stories I talk about and I share the most here is the story of how when I moved back from China, I was incredibly depressed. I'd been 24, I had the most epic year of my life, and I came back home, moved back into my parents, didn't know my purpose, what to do, didn't have a job, didn't really have any friends because I went to college away from home. So I showed back home, I'm back at home, nothing to do all day, no purpose. And for me, I felt like honestly some days I had no real reason to be alive. But since then, thankfully, I haven't really ever struggled with depression since. And I wanna share in this video what I think is the most essential thing you do. If you're slogging through crap every day, you feel depressed, you're going through some difficult life event, and you really just want everything to stop for a while. In this video, I wanna share the exact practice I recommend above all. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book, Master of the Day. Now, one exercise I did during that depressed period of life has been journaling. And I find that journaling is one of the most powerful exercises to go from confusion to clarity. Now I've included a free journaling worksheet and free email course. It's the first link in the description box. So you can click that link, get that free journaling e-course, and that'll give you some of the beginner exercises and more of my story and how I did that. So obviously if you're having like severe depression, go see a doctor, do what's safe, talk to people. But if you feel like for a prolonged period of time, you're going through something and you just hate life. This is the one practice above all that I can recommend that has helped me more than anything to keep momentum in my life. The practice is very simple and it's just never stop doing the foundational rituals, okay? Never stop doing the foundational rituals that keep your life moving forward. And let me explain this a bit more. So over the last seven or so years, about six, seven years, I've been into personal development. I've had my business for five years. And in those years, I've fallen in love, I've been dumped, I've gotten into like best relationships and the worst relationships in my life. I've been the peak of like, my business is actually working and I've been where I thought it was gonna fail and I would have to go find a job again. I mean, I've been through perfect health, health crisis. I've seen so much shit in the last six years of my life, but here's the thing. In those six years, the main thing that has gotten me through and has kept me going, and most important to me, growing and continually making progress, has been that one principle. To no matter what happens, every day I get up and I do the same rituals that keep my life together. Now, in that time period of my life, I put together something called the Doomsday Document. The Doomsday Document is a list of all the aspects of my life. Relationships, health, happiness, finances, etc. And in those sections of my life, the different facets of life, I wrote down what habits I was doing every day to have that part of my life amazing. So when I was my fittest, what was I doing every day? When I was my happiest, what was I doing every day? In the best relationship I'd ever been in, what was I doing every day? When I was the most fulfilled and sleeping the best, what was I doing every day? So I call it the doomsday document because if my life ever goes to hell in that aspect of my life, I can just refer back to that and go back to what are those daily rituals. But in this video specifically, I wanna go more into a tactical process I'd recommend for staying on track or if someone close to you just died, you just got dumped and you wonder what the point of life is now without that person. If you're going through a health crisis and you don't know how things are gonna go forward, do these things every day and I guarantee life will be incredible. So really these four practices, it's like a tripod in a sense. You have the three pegs and you have the center of it. And what I want you to think of as all of these practices are designed to make you feel good. That's it. They're designed to make you feel good. Wake up, be in a good mood, be able to get through the day. So the first part of this pyramid is health practices. The second part is emotional health practices. The third part is contribution. And the fourth part is spirituality or deeper meaning. So when I say health practices, what I mean is the more depressed you are, the more you're hurting because you got dumped, the more you feel that loss of your mom or your dad, the more that your business or company just failed and you feel like this massive failure, the more you need to religiously exercise five days a week. It doesn't mean the grinded out crazy workouts, but if you don't feel well and you're tired, 
you have to be doing the workouts, some kind of exercise just to get circulation going. I didn't realize the importance of this until I started studying Chinese medicine because emotions literally can be moved through exercise. Emotions produce that knot in your throat, the knot in your stomach. Emotions produce sometimes heart attacks or sometimes strokes, insomnia, anxiety, depression even. And exercise can literally physically move the emotion because the emotion gets stuck in the body. It's like a somatic memory. So exercise is so essential on a daily basis. The obvious of eating well, of taking time, of not rushing if you can afford to do that. For me, the emotional practices revolve around, first of all, getting everyone in your life into two buckets. The ones that make you feel good, the ones that make you feel bad. And then spending more time around the people that make you feel good. That is the essence of the feel-good practice. But at the same time, it's dealing with whatever emotional beliefs or traumas or whatever frustrations are coming up that are emotional, whether they're rational or irrational. So if you have this belief that it's never going to get better, how are you going to feel better if you tell yourself every day it's never going to get better? Of course you're going to feel like crap if you just got dumped by someone and you're like, I'm never going to find someone that good again. Of course you're going to feel miserable because you're telling yourself this story that it can only get worse. Or that my company just failed and I'm gonna like my wife's gonna divorce me, my kids are gonna hate me, I don't I can't put food on the table. That belief, of course, is gonna produce suffering every single day. So quickly going through those beliefs and just catching them right when you see them. The third thing is something I reintroduced in the last year, and it's contribution. Because I find that on the days where my life is the worst and I don't want to do anything, one thing that I if I force myself to do it always makes me feel good later. Because on one level, if I'm going through business stuff, relationship stuff, life stuff, and I'm helping someone else out and I see how grateful they are, number one, it reminds me there's more going on in the world besides my own problems. And that often, a lot of the problems I have, they may have two plus some. So I objectively probably have it pretty good. And I think that just contributing also moves your focus away from like all this stuff inside of you, the problem solving with the anxiety, the depression, the frustration, and now you're putting your energy into problem solving for somebody else. And I find that that's really mutually rewarding. So if you haven't already, dedicating some time to contribution, which could be with a friend, with your parents, it could be going to a pet sanctuary to walk the pets, it could be volunteering at a soup kitchen, but something that gets you dedicated to a cause greater than yourself. And the last category here is the spirituality or higher meaning category. And I think for me why this is so essential to re-getting back into your body, having an amazing day, just feeling good, is because spiritual practices I think on one level are designed to not only make us present but make us realize there's a greater purpose for us being alive. And I think that's why humans always have and I think always will have spiritual or religious beliefs. Because regardless of what is objectively true, they make us feel good, like there's a reason I'm going through this. And even if you don't want to believe that or you're non-religious or non-spiritual, adopting the belief that let me just see what good can come out of this, that will automatically prime your mind to look for what's the good thing that can come out of this? What's the advantage? What's the growth? What's the lesson? And I think this is the big difference on one level. The difference is that you're trying to find a purpose and a meaning in the greater part of your life but also in this current suffering experience. So I think if you're going through hell and going through one of the worst times of your life, or maybe you've been kind of going through crap for a long time, months to years, where you don't like your days, you adopt this four-part framework of these are the four habits I do every day related to these big themes, and I promise within a day, a week, a month, you'll feel so incredibly different. And after that, you'll start to feel like yourself again. And I think at the end of the day, when we're going through the crap, we don't feel like ourselves, we're kind of dissociated or depersonalized, I think this is ultimately one of those things that can bring you back into your body, back into your life, and ready to improve it again. So I hope that helps. That's a really big topic and a really important one, especially for people that are going through this like in a chronic sense. So again, those journaling exercises I mentioned were foundational during those early 20s of period of my life, where I was constantly uncertain, frustrated, unhappy, depressed, angry, but really the uncertainty is what really got to me about basically everything. And it was those journaling exercises, the ones I've recommended, that first link in the description, those are the ones that really helped me refocus and get back on track. 
right, guys, so we'll take it from there. You can also check out my last related videos there and right there.